Did you know that Peter actually warned us against misusing Paul's words to promote a lawless faith? He said that some things he wrote were hard to understand and that people would use them to their own destruction. That's 2 Peter 3, 15 through 17. Read it for yourself. In the meantime, if Paul really was against the Torah, we have to reconcile some things he said. Romans 8, 4, that the righteousness of the law, the Torah, might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. What does it mean to walk after the flesh? What does it mean to walk in the spirit? Galatians 5, 19, now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, the list goes on. These things that actually break the Torah means to walk in the flesh. Romans seven fourteen. for we know that the law is spiritual. So if breaking the Torah is walking the flesh, what does it mean to walk in the Torah? Romans seven twelve. wherefore the law is holy and the commandment holy and just and good. If he really was against the Torah, he wouldn't say these things. Romans 2.13, For not the hearers of the law, the Torah, are just before Elohim, but the doers of the Torah shall be justified. Yes, Paul said that. Romans 3.31, Do we then make void the law, the Torah, through faith? Elohim forbid. Yea, we establish the law, the Torah. What does it mean to establish? This is that Greek word. To cause, to make, to stand, to place, to put, to set, to bid, to stand by. To make firm, to fix, establish, to cause a person or a thing to keep its place. He was saying that the Torah stands in its place. We don't walk away from it. Acts 24, 14, But this I confess unto you, that after the way which they call heresy, so worship I the Elohim of my fathers, believing all things which are written in the law, the Torah, and the prophets. You may say to yourself, well, Paul said this because he's a Jew and we're just Gentiles. That's not true. Paul said this as well. Galatians 3, 28 through 29. There is neither Jew nor Greek. This word here is also used to translate for Gentile. There's no Jew or Gentile. There's neither bond nor free. There's neither male nor female, for you're all one in Messiah Husha. And if you be Messiahs, then you're Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Well, if you're Abraham's seed, what does that mean? Isaiah 41, 8. But you, Israel, are my servant, Jacob, whom I have chosen, the seed of Abraham, my friend. If you're Messiah, then you're the seed of Abraham. If you're the seed of Abraham, you are Israel. He said that also here in Ephesians 2, 11 through 13. Wherefore, remember that you being in times past Gentiles in the flesh, you used to be Gentiles in the flesh, who are also called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands, that at that time you were without Messiah, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel. You used to be Gentiles and aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without Elohim in the world. But now, in Messiah Yahushua, you, who sometimes were far off, are made nigh by the blood of Messiah. Made nigh to what? The commonwealth of Israel. Brothers and sisters, men have told you lies for years. Welcome to the household of Israel. Blessings in the name of Yahuwah.